guys, it's Lauren and I am back with another video for you. Today I will be painting a pastel landscape. Um, the landscape scene will be a scene that I took um, on my adventures driving through Montana. Um, for this piece I will almost exclusively be using my Rembrandt pastels. In addition to my Rembrandt pastels, I will also be using a few pastel pencils for uh, the sketching process and to do the underpainting. And I will also be using Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India inks. The paper I will be working on is UART sanded paper in a 240 grit. This is their most coarse uh, paper they sell. I start with sketching in the basic shapes of the landscape. Once the sketch is done, I use pastel pencils to create the underpainting and use rubbing alcohol to blend out the underpainting. Once the alcohol has dried, I go in and block in my darkest shadows with the Dr. P.H. Martin's India ink. Sorry I'm in the frame so much. I'm not used to filming um, such a large painting at my desk. Usually I, I go to my easel, but my easel was currently being used, so I had to do it at my desk, and obviously I'm not used to knowing where to put my body when I'm working from standing at my desk. <laughs> so back to the painting, I started with the sky, and then started working my way down the paper. So then onto the mountains and worked my way to the foreground. I found this is kind of the best way um, in those early layers to avoid getting a halo around objects. Um, sometimes if you do something and then you have to try and draw around it, you get like a little halo where the paper's poking through. However, by working top to bottom, you can overlap what you're working on with what you previously did to avoid that gap or halo effect. And it also makes blending a little bit easier because you're not worried about messing up the details you created on your like previous section with trying to incorporate it to the next one. So that's just my style. You may have something that works better for you. At this stage, I am just blocking in the basic colors and shadows and not focusing on details. I'm also trying to keep a light hand um, to apply the pastels with so I don't fill in the tooth of the paper too quickly. I then spray my paper with a, a quick spray of workable fixative to help hold those bottom layers in place so they didn't move too much. I then move my focus to the background and start blocking in some of the highlights and shadows on the mountains and the fields and bushes that are next to them. The paper I'm resting my hand on is glassine paper. It's a smooth paper um, that's glossy and it doesn't disrupt the layers underneath. At this point in the painting, I realized that my sky needed to be a little bit darker. So I went up and started adding some more contrast to help the highlights in the clouds really pop. And then I come back down and start working on the background and just gradually start working my way down um, I do start jumping around a bit more and just kind of working in areas that are catching my eye. Um, I That's kind of the way I work in all of my paintings is I kind of do some base layers and then I just kind of work in a circular motion of just what area needs attention and then I work in that area and then I kind of move to the next area that needs attention until I get it the way I like. Um, I don't have a hard rule of like I always work front to back and I finish an area all the way and then move to the next area. Um, I've seen some artists that work that way where they will paint an eye and then they'll do the eyebrows and then they just kind of work out and everything's complete and they hardly even touch up um, what they first did. But I, I guess I'm just not that secure in what I do and confident in what I do and so I kind of like to do work on it for a bit, work on a different area and come back and kind of do this back and forth motion. One thing to kind of bring to your attention while we're close up is how much that grass I've been adding is really popping and that's because the color behind it, the base layers are dark enough that it's giving a nice contrast so it appears brighter. Um, one rule of thumb to kind of keep in mind is that if you can't get your highlights bright enough and your white is not like standing out, that means that the color, the value of the colors next to it are too light. Um, so if you, if things aren't popping and you can't get your darks dark enough or your highlights light enough um, to stand out, that means 
the the color the the value of the colors next to it are a little bit off and you need to tweak those so from this point on I'm just kind of looking at my reference photo getting an idea of what I want and then kind of tweaking the details and refining and adding more adjusting color adding grass um, I'm even realizing that some of the things on the reference photo that work in the photo don't necessarily translate well to a painting and so I kind of change that I get rid of one of the bushes that you see change the direction of kind of the the little stream running through so it doesn't go right up through the middle of the painting um, and just kind of refining and tweaking as I go along and just doing layer upon layer and upon layer um, one thing I wish I would have done with this painting was take more breaks and kind of take more time. Um, I did this painting pretty much all in one sitting. Um, and I like it, but I made a few mistakes that were hard to fix that if I was to paint this again, I would do um, a little bit differently. But I couldn't, but it, they became a lot more difficult to change. And I feel like if I would have taken a break, um, even taking the rest of the day off and came back to it the next day, I would have noticed some more of the, those mistakes and been able to fix them earlier. Um, you can see I'm starting to pull in some different colors um, than what you would normally see in nature. So there's some um, pinks and blues and um, purples being pulled in. And I added those in to kind of help add some dimension and interest to the painting because um, it was feeling a little flat. Um, since I had limited myself to my Rembrandt pastels and I didn't have a, a huge collection of them, I didn't have enough to enough greens and, on hand and some other colors to create a lot of interest. So I ended up having to use a lot more like fun, play col playful colors. At this point in the painting, I'm about 90% done. And while I was working on it, I didn't realize that my camera had turned off. Um, so I'm gonna kind of talk through some of the things I tweaked on the painting. I brightened up the building, I put a purple gray um, color over the mountains to kind of help them seem more distant. I added a few more colorful highlights to the grass and kind of added some sharper details to help it pop. I also added a little bush to the mid-ground on the left-hand side to help create interest um, so it wasn't too open of a, a space. So there you have it. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of what I create, please hit the subscribe button. Have a great day. Bye!